Hello and welcome to another tutorial of this series of videos where we build our own online store from scratch. In the past video, we set up our environment using Node and NPM, we created our Nux3 project and we added Bootstrap to it. We also used view components to create our own shopping cart that saves the items in the local storage to persist them in case the user reloads the page. In this video, we're going to be using a new feature that comes with Nux3 and that's the server side functions. Although with previous versions we already had the ability of writing server-side code with this one we can now write endpoints just like if we were writing an API with Node.js. We're gonna be combining this with the Firebase admin SDK which is the server-side version of Firebase to bring the products from the database which in this case is gonna be Firestore. Before we start though just a quick reminder that Nux version 3 is still in the beta version so it's very likely that changes are gonna be coming in the near future. I'm gonna be updating the github repo and the blog post but just keep an eye on the documentation as well. Now to get started we're gonna go to the Firebase console with our Google account and we're gonna add a new project. In my case I'm gonna name it online store Nox3. I'm gonna disable the analytics and just click on create. Navigate into the Firestore database section and hit create database, select production mode and your preferred location, in my case it's going to be US Central. Now we have access to the Cloud Firestore section here in the Firebase console. As you can see we have the data section and then we have the rules. Here in the rules you set the permissions to access the database from the client side. So for example, if I had a user's collection, I would set it so that each user can only access their own information instead of the whole database of users. In this case, I'm just going to set the rules to deny all client access on every document because instead of using the client side library, we're going to be using the server side library, which overrides these permissions anyways. Now let's go back to the data tab and here we're going to add a products collection where we're going to store the products information. Each product is going to have a document ID, a name field of type string, a description field of type string as well, a photo URL of type string, and finally a price field of type number. I'm going to add a total of four products with the same data here. And then we're going to go ahead and connect this database to our Nux project. And for that, head on to the settings and then project settings. Then click on the service accounts tab and select generate new private key. This is going to download a JSON file that contains the admin SDK credentials for your application server to connect to Firebase. We're going to paste this JSON file in the root of our project to make sure it's not exposed in the client side. Then go to your terminal and type in npm install firebase-admin. This is going to install the Firebase Admin SDK, which is again the server-side version of Firebase. And also before anything else, go ahead and open your gitignore file and add the name of the JSON file that contains the credentials from your server. This is because this might count as a sensitive file and we don't want to have it in the GitHub repository itself. Then we're going to add a folder called server and inside we're going to add a folder called API and then inside we're going to add a file named products.ts. This is going to create a new route in our application that is going to be accessible from slash API slash products. Now in the products.ts file, first import the get firestore function from the Firebase admin package. Also import the initialize app, get apps and cert functions from the Firebase admin slash app package. Then you're going to get all the initialized apps and we're going to check if the app's length or the amount of apps that have been initialized is zero. And if it's zero, then we're going to go ahead and run the initialize app function that receives a credential and that's a certificate that receives a parameter with the path to the JSON file that we got from Firebase. Then we're going to export a default asynchronous function that is going to receive in this case two parameters, the request and the response parameter. Then we're going to create an instance of Firestore and call it DEB. Now using this Firestore instance, we're going to get all the documents in the products collection 
Now we need to loop through each of those documents and get the data out of them and then save them in a new array called products data. Then we're just going to return the products data array and that's it for this function. Then if you run the project with npm run dev and then go to your browser and open localhost port 3000 slash api slash products you're going to find the json with the products information from firebase. Finally, go into the index.view file inside the pages folder. On top of the template, add a new script setup tag. Then, using the useFetch function, pass in the route, which is slash API slash products. And this is going to get you the data so that we can use it in our front end. So now you can go ahead and delete the products array from the data object in your component. And then in the HTML, instead of writing products, we're going to type in data. Then if you go into your browser, you're going to find that the products are now coming from Firebase Firestore. If you edit a field in Firestore, it's also going to change in your front end. That was it for this video, stay tuned for the next one where we're gonna add authentication to our project. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.